In this video, we're going to be fitting a new sender unit to this 110 here. Now, it's 6.30 in the morning and I forgot to bring this car in last night and it's minus 11 at the moment, a bit chilly. I haven't had a shave, I haven't had my breakfast, but I'm going to get it in the shop. But I thought to myself, this is the one that's just had the 300 TDI engine rebuilt. Let's see what it starts like. I have to be careful because it's really cheap. This is sort of one of the dilemmas we face here because the door's frozen up, it's got water in the in the, uh, the latch and it's frozen solid. So I'm just going to crawl over the seat and let this run for a little while. Well, that wasn't too bad. Started up quite good actually, but minus 11 and just on the block heater. And that's a tight engine. So I'm going to somehow struggle on and try and get it in the shop. Well, I won't struggle, but get it warmed up and then we'll discuss what we're going to do. I tell a bit of a lie. It isn't, it, I thought it was early, later than that earlier. It's actually seven o'clock and it was minus 15 outside and it feels like minus 19 so the old Land Rover didn't start too bad at minus 15 good test eh? now one of the things that people don't sort of realize about when you're doing car repairs and things like this here in winter is uh, when I bring this car in here now this is going to drop this temperature in the shop which is a nice cosy 20 degrees to uh, almost match the car so as you can see it's a good example actually it's an interesting example you see the wipers are absolutely frozen solid those open uh, type of wipers are absolutely useless in this weather but um, the door seals have all seized up because you see the other day it was uh, three degrees so everything melted you can see there's not much snow on the car there's, it's been out there a few days and everything melted and this was just overnight and but the thing is all the water's got into the seals and stuff like this makes it extremely difficult to get in um, on that side of the car on the driver's side when I push the door button in it's uh, frozen solid so well it's, it's pushed in so that's no good but I'm pleased it started up all right. Yeah, I was all right. And, even, and that is with a little bit of an air problem. You could hear it when it was time to start. It was, you know, it was trying to suck the fuel through. But another interesting thing is this car's been here for quite a while, so it's still got some diesel in it. Um, over here in Canada, they changed the formulation a little bit for diesel in winter to make it start a bit better. Hence, that's why diesel in, in, in Canada in winter is very expensive. They just I don't know what they do with it, probably put a pint of petrol in it. But 
it starts and it goes well so I'm going to leave that uh, to get warmed up a little bit and then I'm going to just show you about this uh, gauge in this video I'm going to be just describing a little bit about this tank unit PRC 8463 now this is uh, pre 300 TDI when you had a low level fuel warning light in your car now I know this is a cheap one, I know this is a Britpart one, I know you're all jumping up and down and getting all excited. The thing was Britpart, who's my supplier, didn't, because I buy direct from them, they didn't have an OEM available. And to be honest, the difference between the OEM price and this one was only about a pound or two. So I'm thinking that the OEM one's exactly the same. As we've seen from Lucas things before. It doesn't mean much. And if you want a genuine one, well, it was four times more expensive. The thing is, it's so simple. Um, I don't even think Land I don't even think Britpark could mess it up. But I'll show you the reason why I'm changing it once we open it up. Now you can guarantee your bottom dollar I haven't got a knife here to open the plastic bag. So let's get it out. Ah, oh, hell did it? Let's rip it open. I'm not going to send it back away. <laughs> you can tell instantly that this is a pre-300 TDI because it's metal here and this was its downfall. The problem we've got with this vehicle here is this metal tube. It's rotted away here and it's had a piece of uh, plastic pipe shoved over the end and the clip on. Well I think our problem is this has corroded so badly that air is being sucked in uh, where, the, where there's corrosion on the pipe so we're just going to change it the other thing too is uh, this sender is so badly corroded that uh, this, this is the ground pin here and it's almost, well it's not non-existent but being, as if you can see there it's a thread now you don't actually put a nut and bolt on there, you just push a, put a push on connector. The problem with this idea is that it's very difficult to clean because it's a thread when you put your sandpaper across it or whatever you want to use you won't be able to get it really 100% clean. If it was just a straight pin almost like this, no problem, you just sand it away and away you go. Um, as you can see we've got a, a T and a W on there I think W mean, must mean the warning light and T must mean the, uh, I don't know, temperature gauge? Can't be. Not even, not even brick part of that dumb. But it's got a T in it, I don't know what that means. The, it, it's very, very simple in operation. All it does is there's a potentometer in here with an extra wire on so that when this goes almost, you know, like a couple of gallon left in your tank it switches a light on and the dash. Like I say, the 300 TDIs didn't do that. And the 300 TDIs, this was all plastic. And there's another thing I'm going to tell you about the 300 TDI one shortly. They're so simple, they're stupid. And that's why I just got a cheap, uh, that's why I got a cheap one. There is not much really to go wrong with them, apart from the calibration could be out. Uh, the pickup pipe here, uh, if, I've got one of these in my um, 130 and it seems to be that there's something in the tank that's stopping this going down because I know my tank as soon as it shows quarter of a tank it's empty so uh, I've, I'm always wary of that and that's why I'm saying if you once you get familiar with your vehicle and when you're running out of fuel then you, 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 can't, you can't really trust gauges all that much, that's the problem and they are pretty cheap and I, I expect even if you put a genuine one on it'll be exactly the same and it still won't read right um, I want to show you a couple of little things on these units here that you can make them better now this might be a bit of a ramble but you might like this many years ago when I was back in North Yorkshire I, I worked for a, a construction company and I uh, used to fix all their vans and tractors and JCBs and stuff like that and one day they turned up with a 
a Ford Escort van. Lovely little car, that was, that was a 1.6 diesel, it was a cracking little engine and super economical and powerful. But they had a problem with it. They kept saying, Mike, it keeps stopping. And we don't know what it is. He said, we've had a rebuilt injector pump on it, rebuilt injectors, uh, fuel lines replaced. We, we can't work it out. Take the van, drive it up and down, go home backwards and forwards in it. And, and see, what, see, see what you think. So I drove it around for about three weeks and nothing ever happened. And then, one day, driving along the road, boom, the engine just stopped dead. I thought, oh, this is it, this is it. And now I'm at the side of the road, sort of going home around about five o'clock in traffic. I thought, well, at least I'll be able to find out what it is. Looked around it, couldn't find out. I couldn't see anything, no wires off, nothing. It seemed as if somebody had pulled the wire off the stop solenoid off the back of the pump. But it wasn't. As soon as I got back in the car again and I tried to crank it, hey, presto, it started again. So I got home, had my tea, and the next day when I went to work, I had an idea what it was. I thought there was a blockage in the fuel line. But I was, a I was on the right track, but I was a little bit wrong. And what had happened was, at the end of the pipe here, <laughs> there was a leaf in the fuel tank, and it had sucked it onto the end of the pipe. Now... The problem, why it, why it corrected itself is that when I turned the car off and I was wimbling about for a little bit trying to find out where it was and then I turned it back on again, the vacuum had dropped in the pipe, the leaf had fallen off and it would start again. That's why everybody had a lot of problems with it. So anyway, got the tank out, got, took the tank out, there, enough, there, there sure enough was a leaf in it and sorted it out. Chance in a lifetime, I've had it happen four times now and especially with defenders with the big filler caps um, I've had leaves in that tank uh, one had a shipping label you know, you know when they used to put paper labels on tanks and things like that there was one actually inside the tank getting sucked on the end so whenever I do one of these fillers now I cut in these into a point you know, cut them into a point. I'm going to do that in a minute. But there's another way you could do it. And I did this with my 130 because I was play. I've got, I've got the same problem with my 130. That's why I'm rambling on. And what I did was my 130. Um, I thought of something else as a different experiment. And I got hold of some of this um, uh, fuel line. Now this is proper fuel line. It's um, a neoprene based stuff. And. Um, this is for diesel, it's not for petrol. You don't, want any, you, you don't want anything that's going to react with diesel. And what I did was, I mean, this isn't the right size, but it's just to give you an example. I stripped off all this furry stuff here, stuck a bit on the end, a nice tight fit, and then I put a T on the end like this. I put a plastic T on and two bits of pipe coming out. So that if one side blocked up with a leaf, well it couldn't because it would then pull, it would pull fuel from the other side. And it's never been a problem in, in four or five years. It was a problem, um, but it's never stopped. But I've noticed on the 300 TDI uh, fuel pickup pipes that they actually put a notch in the middle of the pipe. Like they cut a slot in it. And that, again, that's to stop any blockages. Now you're going to be wondering while I'm rambling on here, why don't they put a filter on the end? Well, we just saw on the video of the uh, 300 TDI starting up in winter, the mesh fuel strainer that goes on the end of here can block with humidity uh, and, and the diesel is very, very thick in winter. So it can't get through the strainer. So that's one thing you do when you've got a diesel. If you're converting from a petrol, like a V8 or something like that, you take the sender out, pull this off, because if you're at the side of the road in, you know, in winter, you, you, if it blocks up, that's it. And that's why that the, um, the 300 TDIs and the 200 TDIs on, the, on their fuel uh, filters, they have a uh, water drain on there to let the water out. So it's handy now and again to have a check. So I'm going to grind off this pipe and I'll show you what I do and it's really simple. Um, 
and then we'll come back and ramble on a bit more probably so there you go that's all I ever do to them you see I put a little V in with a grinder and buff it off it doesn't have to be fancy believe me you know you can file it if you want but I'm a bit lazy so I just bang it in the corner of the grindstone now I've already blown it out to get any dirt out but I want to just show you these things whilst I'm at it these are industrial cotton buds they are one of the most handiest things you can have in your workshop get them off Amazon cheap as chips but put a little bit of oil on the end of them like that and you can shove them up here and make sure there's no look at that look at the muck look at the muck in here look at that see that's a surprise isn't it even though you blow it out it's still got dirt in it that's why we put a little bit of oil on just to get the dirt you know for the oil to, for the uh, summit to stick to it oh, let's put that into there let's have a look up here now these are on hardwood uh, stalks a little bit dirty quite surprising isn't it where it all comes from but you don't want it sucking into your fuel filter so anyway that's that there you go it's still dirty look damn even with grinding it out I wouldn't have thought it had got that filthy so we're going to keep on doing that keep on keeping on Till it's nice and clean and you know we don't want it to leave any uh, bits of cotton in there so once that's clean we're going to get our our old favorite brake cleaner and give it a, a good old washing out and make sure it's clean these are uh, like I say they're only cheap and cheerful but they do the job and they always work in conjunction with the same gauge 300 TDI, do not, no matter do, they change the part numbers like the weather for Land Rover but it's actually the same thing now in the old days, in the good old days fuel sender units used to, they bounce up and down as you in your know, as you're going uphill and downhill and you're going round corners, this thing bounces up and down. And in the old days, the needle used to correspond with the same bouncing. It used to fly all over the place. Well, what they did to correct it was they put a, a voltage stabilizer in it, and it sort of evened out the, um, the 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 up and down movement of that, and kept your gauge pretty much stable. So it was it 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 read slow, if you see what I mean. And that's all built into this unit. Whereas in the old days it used to have a voltage stabiliser as a separate unit behind your dashboard. Well, them days have gone now. And again with the TD5, well, they're all sort of digitally electronic-y type things. So uh, that's, that's a different thing. Um, what else can I tell you? I think that's about it really. Um, I'm not going to work on this car straight away, I'm going to hold this video, but I might just put it up and, and then we'll do another video of actually fitting it. But one thing I wanted to show you was, I made this tool a little while ago and I've sort of cut it down, it's like a sawn off shotgun now. And um, it was a little bit too long and sometimes you had to drop the um, exhaust pipe, but now I've got this one and it's to, to latch onto the rings here for the sender. Now I just bought a great big packet of them, a, what is it called, a ARA1501L. For me to buy a bulk pack is the same as buying, <laughs> buying just one, so that's not too bad. But these, these are getting thinner by the year. And these little tangs are a bugger to get on and off in the tank, uh, if you see what I mean. And what everybody usually does is get a hammer and twist them because it's like a bayonet fitting. It, it goes in and twists and locks, but it's really a big screw thread. And uh, so I came up with this little idea a while ago. And, but you can see just this morning I've had to grind it down a little bit because these have got a little bit thinner. So how it works, and you can make this at home, it's only about a piece of two inch pipe or something like that. 
Um, you can see here that's where the notch is but here there's a little raised portion where that slips into your tank so you can see I've in the old days this used to be quite quite high um, but they've got a bit shorter now but what I did was it, it wasn't fitting snugly inside the ring whereas if you can see that all the way around now that's quite even Stevens so when you push push and twist it locks it in all nice and even and you can see I put some half hour stalls on here well that's so you can put your screwdriver around at different angles without hitting bits and pieces of the bodywork or the chassis or the exhaust so and if you notice there's a big screw uh, big slot here well on the 300 TDI's the wire is attached in a plastic molding to the back of here it, they're, they're potted in that means there's some resin holding the wires in a lot better idea than this idea this is pathetic especially on the Land Rover so the wires come through here twist and turn and they're pressed up so that will lock into the tank and I'll show you that I think yeah I'll think I'll do that as a separate video how to fit it because to be honest I'd like to put this video up today and um, that car is going to be f so cold to work on mm. going to be fun dripping cold water down the back of your neck under a wheel arch not fun at all so that's what we're going to do that's how to sort of a, in, modernize a, a sender and uh, I think it's going to be all right when we put the, the wires on here we're going to put new connectors on the ends of the wires and we're also going to pack these full of like a spray grease to get inside there to stop the water because as many, many of you know already these are on the side of the tank not too far away from the wheel so it's getting all that road dirt and salt and stuff piled up behind here <sighs> It would have been nicer if they put them in the tank at the top with an access plate and you wouldn't have had so many leak problems, you would have e easier access to put the sender in and out but they decided to do it like that probably because it was cheap. Right, so there you go, I hope you like that. I'm going to go back upstairs now and have my breakfast, have a shave and get on with the rest of today's wars. In fact, it's Christmas Eve, so I better get some shopping done because well, otherwise I'll be in trouble. Talk to you later. Have a great Christmas. Bye.